Welcome to Oak Ridge National Laboratory's Manufacturing Demonstration Facility. My name is Ryan Dayhoff. I'm the group leader for the Deposition Sciences and Technology Group, and I lead the metal additive manufacturing portion of the work that we're doing here inside of this facility. Uh, this facility is actually extremely unique. We get to work very closely with a variety of different industrial partners. We work with everybody from the supply chain in terms of material uh, that's being used in additive manufacturing to the process that are actually building components with additive manufacturing. Uh, we also work with end users of the equipment as well uh, to obtain different goals. So what's the real goal of additive manufacturing? What do people know additive manufacturing to be? It's something like this. Uh, it's the ability to go through and print materials and geometries that you can't fabricate through any other method, right? This is extremely important when it comes to industrial applications because you can think, how would I lightweight something like an aerospace component? And this gives you a very, very good example of how you may be able to achieve that. Um, Close up, this is a non-stoichastic mesh structure with improved functional properties, right? So that's really the goal. Why this is important is because it demonstrates the ability uh, to fabricate any complex geometry with additives. So here's an example of another complex geometry. This is actually for a project that we did on design of robotics components. And what this illustrates is the ability to manufacture something that you can't make any other way. This is part of a six foot long titanium robotic arm. It has all the degrees of freedom of a human arm and this robot is completely controlled by hydraulics, right? Bringing in additive manufacturing, what we've been able to do is reduce the weight of an individual component in that arm. This is an example of that. You can actually see this is incredibly lightweight. How we achieve this lightweight uh, is to go through and only build the components that are important for function, right? So that's all of the hydraulic lines, all of the electric lines, and then we wrapped an, a skin on the outside of this component, and now we've made it extremely lightweight. It's all hollow on the inside. This is important because now that entire robotic arm, which is six foot long, floats in water. It's actually neutrally buoyant, right? So that's a good example of where additive manufacturing makes a lot of sense, right? So another application is something like this. This is an aerospace bracket. Um, and we're working on this with an industrial partner. Uh, the challenge becomes is I can now print very complex designs, I can save money. But in order to do that, how do I guarantee that the material properties in this bracket are actually good enough for service? So I'm, I'm gonna put this on a plane and fly it. How do you bet your life that that is gonna survive in service, right? And so where we're working is on a variety of in-situ process monitoring techniques. We're looking at including that into advanced high-performance computational data frameworks that allow us to rapidly extract that knowledge and information content on how this bracket was made. We can look at the scientific details of how the microstructure is solidifying, how the precipitation structure is forming, and we can make sure that this bracket is certifiable uh, to go into components. We're also then going through and looking at not just printing materials like titanium, but going through and printing nickel-based materials and advanced high temperature materials that can perform under extreme environments for things like the energy sector. So let's uh, actually go over and I'll show you some of the equipment uh, that we have available inside of our facility. So this right here is the Arcam Electron Beam Melting Q10 technology. This is one of the latest and greatest pieces of equipment from Arcam. Um, and what we're doing on this piece of equipment is really looking into certification and qualification. So what you can actually see on the screen right here is a single shot near infrared image of every single layer that we've processed, right? This is one of those layers. Why this is important is we can actually take this information, we are doing analysis with the visual analytics um, and sensors group in order to basically extract all the porosity information inside of this build and put that into a three-dimensional visualization. We can then take this porosity map and we can put that uh, into a computational model that helps us predict the performance of that bracket. Right? So that's extremely important to have. That's something that we don't have right now today. So this is integrated technology. This was actually developed in conjunction with RCAM directly. We have a cooperative research and development agreement with them. 
through that agreement, we actually do have employees co-located here at the MDF with us working on the technology. This is really important because it gives us a lot of insight into the technology, not only where it is today, but the historical development of that technology so that we can help really meet and exceed industry's expectation of what this technology can do. Right? So this is one example. Uh, we're also collecting a lot of other in situ process data as well, actually in the machine itself. So every time we do a build, we actually get a build report with somewhere on the order of 20,000 variables, of which 600 of those are actually captured on a per second time basis, right? So this really goes into that certification and qualification understanding is we need techniques that actually use high performance computing to extract all the information content out of those variables. So that's the direction that we're heading uh, in collaboration with RCAM on this technology. So this is the Renishaw laser powder bed technology that we've been working with. We also have several different laser powder bed systems and really these are just a different tool in additive manufacturing. It has things that it does very, very well in comparison to some of the electron beam melting technologies. It actually gets very good surface finish and resolution as well. One of the big challenges is residual stress, right? And so as you take a molten pool and solidify that over and over and over again as you build up a three-dimensional component, we start to evolve residual stress in the part, which is actually detrimental depending on how that residual stress um, plays a role in the material properties and performance, right? So what we're actually doing is utilizing expertise and capabilities across the laboratory up at like the spallation neutron source in order to go through and do residual stress mapping of individual components as they come off. We can then use this data to go through and calibrate and certify our residual stress models, right? So this is a very unique aspect that Oak Ridge National Laboratory brings to laser powder bed additive manufacturing. In addition, we're doing a lot of work on materials development and again, taking that same concept of certification and qualification in situ process monitoring, extend it into these equipment uh, such that we can go through and actually produce functional uh, components that actually work in service. That's a big goal is, is certification and qualification. This is a little bit different technology than the ones I spoke about previously. This is actually a directed energy process where instead of actually using powder in a powder bed, what we're actually doing is putting powder inside of these hopper systems. We then utilize inert gas to flow that powder to a nozzle head out here, at which point we use a one kilowatt laser uh, to go through and melt exactly where that powder is being sprayed. By doing so, we can actually add up a layer of molten material, which we can then continually deposit layer upon layer upon layer until we have a three-dimensional structure. Why this particular technology is unique is you can, number one, do multi-compositional analysis. So you can do two different composition of materials. You can go through and do graded composition, so you can start with material A, and slowly grade to material B. It's a very good tool for material exploration. In terms of an industrial setting where it very much excels is on the repair of existing components which may have been damaged during service. So you could go through and repair the end of a turbine blade, but we're also going through and repairing things like tooling and die fixtures. This is a project that we have with Cummins where we're actually going through and repairing engine blocks that have developed a crack during use. And what we do is we go through and we machine out the portion of the block that's cracked. We're then going to go through and use this technology to add material up uh, to fill in that area that we machined away. What ends up happening and what we're trying to achieve by doing this is number one, to repair the engine, but number two, we're actually going through and changing the material of the engine block which changes the performance. We're actually trying to uh, change the thermal conductivity such that we can improve the brake thermal efficiency of that engine during service and get better energy efficiency uh, during operation. This is one of the most unique applications of additive manufacturing that I've participated in to date. What you're actually looking at here is a project that was sponsored by the Office of Naval Research led by the robotics group uh, here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. 
And what they've been able to do is actually make two six foot long titanium robotic arms. These arms actually lift about 25 pounds. But what's extremely unique about them is through design optimization with additive manufacturing, we've been able to cut a significant amount of weight out of every single component here, which makes these arms float when they're submerged in water. That's incredibly, incredibly unique. We've also been able to go through and cut out about 300 components from the original design, right? We're now down to under 40 uh, additive manufacturer components on this robotic arm. What's also unique about the design is they've been able to route all of the hydraulic lines and all of the electric lines through the internal structure itself, which is something that you can't do traditionally. So when the final assembly is completed, there'll be plates that go over each one of these individual areas. And so basically all you'll see is a titanium arm. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining me in the manufacturing demonstration facility today. This is just a glimpse into the science and technology that we're working on here. For more information, you can look at our website, ornl.gov manufacturing. Thanks.